Okay, welcome to another episode of Crime Pays a Bad and It Does It. I didn't come out here intending to make a video. Okay, I just I just came out here trying to cool down, feel better. You know, I was driving through Central Texas yesterday. It's just a fucking nonstop shopping mall shithole from Fort Worth right on down to the border. And, uh, you know, and then I got came out here to the West Texas desert where it's cooled out a little bit. There's less people, less stupid shit being uh, built over beautiful things. And, uh, you know, I just came out to kind of cool my mind a little bit. You can see the Chihuahua Desert's been lit up. Uh, there's this Thymophila asteraceae. It's just sunflower family asteraceae. It's a species of Thymophila just lighting up the whole goddamn desert. Uh, you could see the Ocotillo. It's dropping. It's about to drop its leaves now because it's getting a little chilly uh, and it's dried out a little bit. But this area got dumped on. There's been a ton of rain. And so everything is lit up. Everything's going off. Most stuff is done flowering. Uh, you know, some of the... Uh, some of the mandevilla, there's a cool night blooming mandevilla, which is a member of the oleander family that was going off. You know, it's it's basically already done. It's in it's in it's in fruit already. You got those two little bullhorn fruits coming off. So a lot of stuff is done, but a lot of stuff is just uh you know still going off, like this peyote, like this lophophora, Williamsii. And there's a whole bunch of it. There's Areocarpus uh, as well, aka the living rock cactus. Uh it's not out here right now, but uh now, I'll show you some later on. We just passed by. It's not it's not blooming, but it's still looking good. But I can't get over uh, some of these peyotes. Look how beautiful that looks. Look at a nice contrast with the thymophila in the background. Mm -hmm. Thymophila, of course, is a, a marigold. So Tagiti tribe smells very pungent. And it does have those uh, wonderful orange glands. See that? Those orange glands are the sense of the, the, uh, the source of the pleasant smell. So, you know, this whole, all these, all this stuff, most stuff in the marigold tribe smells really good if you brush up against the, uh, the foliage. And, uh, and there's that, that pear, just such a beautiful plant, such an enigmatic plant, so pleasant to see whenever you do encounter it. And it's, uh, it's going off. Got some going, uh, going off beneath this Tequilia gregii too, which is a wonderful shrub itself. Uh, you know, this, you know what, this is, never mind. this is Leucophyllum. Looks like Leucophyllum minus plant, big giveaway was that uh, those styles were, you know, remain on those fruits. There's also Tequilia, tequilia gregia here, but it looks much different. It looks more fuzzy, because it's a bore edge. There's a little peyote going off right down there. You could see it. Look at that guy flowering. There's one there, one there. Now, the peyote's not as, it's not as, uh, oh, look, there's a little guy. Dude, we came out here a few months ago, and these guys looked rough. They were just getting cooked. They weren't doing that great. But uh, again, we got 15 inches of rain in one month out here. And so everything just plumped up. Look at it. The plumpy, plumpyjuicyboys.com. So again, I encourage everyone to grow this plant from seed. Get seeds online. Get them wherever. And just grow a shit ton of it. Okay? Not even to use. Just to grow. Because, you know, I think a lot of it is people don't want you to grow it. So that makes me want to say, fuck you. Uh, you know, I'm going to grow it. Now, I can't grow it, of course, because I'm in a little bit of a precarious position. But uh, there's certainly a lot of people in Southern California uh, growing the hell out of this. And uh, I certainly encourage it. You know, this, this is definitely a plant that should not should not be illegal. It's been being used by people for uh, thousands of years. Uh, and more importantly, oh, see, there's the Areocarpus. It's died. Why did Areocarpus die, but the loaf didn't? See, I, when I see these guys, I try to cover them. Try to cover them with some rocks and give them some, you know, because when summer comes around, it's really like spring, late late spring and uh, and early summer. It gets hot, but they haven't had any rain yet because we tend to get rain out here uh, in the later parts of the year. So but look at that. Look at that flower. Look, just typical cactus flower. All the yellows are the anthers. Those white... Uh, look like little tentacle things are that's the part of the stigma those are lobes of the stigma which is the female receptive part of the flower see there you go see you could see this you know he's been through the, he's been through the drought look how blue he is too all right that's an indication that he's uh that there's a lot of cuticle on the epidermal tissue of that you know protecting him from the sun okay so you see plants in cultivation sometimes that are a little bit more green uh, they don't look like this because they've been, you know, they've been spoiled. But out here, you know, he's he's got no people uh, protecting him, you know, watering him, etc. So he's just exposed to the elements. That taproot likely goes eight inches down 
into the soil too. So it just looks like a little plate right here, but that taproot goes quite deep. And again, that uh, that white, you see you got the yellow anthers, so many stamens surrounding a central style. And the stigma that's atop that style has upwards of uh, five stigma lobes. Another member of Polyvalaceae right there too. Hard to get excited about sometimes because the flowers are so tiny, but uh, but you know, cool family, cool genus. See, you could see peyote growing with Senegalia romeriana, another wonderful legume that smells incredible when it blooms. Right there, see that? You could see that. You could do that. You could see peyote growing with uh, Parthenium and Canum. You could see that. They do that. They do all kinds of stuff right there. Just hiding out. Fucking aerial carpus looks good too. Oh, it's so nice out here. How'd it get so nice? How do you get to be so nice? How do you do that? Look, this guy's closing up. He just He's just done flowering. He's going to be putting out a little chili pepper fruit in uh, maybe a week. I don't know how long does it take, a week or two? You could see peyote growing with astrolepis too. See that? Wonderful desert fern. Look, it actually looks like that one kicked the bucket maybe. I don't know. Oh, that's nice. Look at it. Two areocarpus and a very plump little loaf. Mm -hmm. We just had a little fruit on it. We put the seed right there. Mm -hmm. Hiding beneath the Budalua. Look at that. Look at this man. See, it's in fruit. A little chili pepper fruit. See that? So we're going to take this out. And uh, where should we plant some? Uh, where, should we, where should we plant some? We'll plant some in a spot where it's likely to do good. Likely to do well for itself. Right, right, right there is fine. See, so squeeze it open. Now, if you were going to grow these from, you know, see, you just smush them on a piece of paper and, uh, you know, put it next to a fan. You know, you get some airflow on it, dry the juice out, you get the little black seeds left. We're just going to sow it right down here, though. Here we go. Here's a desert hibiscus, hibiscus coulteri, and it's actually in seed. So I'm going to collect this. You can see that fruit just split open. That ovary just split open, and uh, the seeds have that little plumose attachment to them for the wind dispersal and what the shit. So I'm going to take this stuff in a bag, and I uh, give it to a friend I know that uh, propagates a lot of Chihuahua Desert natives. Look at that, another one. They're all going off. They're so happy right now. Another massive bastard right there, hiding in the shade. Another guy right there on a south-facing slope, which I did not expect. I thought they would need maybe a little bit more cover. But here they are. I've only, you know, only other place I've seen them like this in this kind of habitat. You know, not, because you go a little bit more east, they grow in a, they grow in the shade of mesquite, you know. Like South Texas population, where it's more humid, closer to the Gulf, it's a much different uh, habitat. But out here in the desert, only place I've, I've seen them like this that's comparable is Coahuila, which again is a limestone, limestone substrate, and they're just popping off everywhere like weeds, but... This is this is not such a treat to see, and it's going to mean a lot of fruit, a lot of fruits, little pink chili pepper fruits, and a lot of seed, and hopefully a lot of recruitment next year. Let's see these guys. Look at that massive, all flowering. Another one just finishing flowering. I wonder if he was covered. I wonder if the termites. It's just the them, them chewing on a. Yeah. Golly, what another guy over there. Another one over there. It's a healthy population, but again, they're on a south-facing slope, which just throws me off because it's you think they'd get fried, but they're doing fine. Another little guy going off. Oh, who's pollinating him? Who's that guy in there? Who's that guy? A little beetle or something, I don't know. Jeffia, Asteraceae. Look, gotta, gotta look at the phyleries for the diagnosis on species. Phyleries and the leaves. You can see multi-seriate phyleries, very scabrid, and uh, leaves are let's see are they alternate yeah roughly these leaves are scabbard as hell too nice little book this is this is kind of exceptionally nuts because that that's right that's coming out right from between the rocks you know that tuber goes down at least eight inches that root that stocky root look at a pack rat piss see how oily it why does it do that or the shit rather <clears throat> so that, that that tuber that storage root of that uh lofophora is probably splitting the rock same with this massive bastard look at that look at that guy just a giant god what a beast how old gotta be a hundred years probably and that's a beautiful thought hundred years without being picked or cut or fucked with by people beautiful geometry in that uh that stem look at that 
cool little member of Nictaginaceae right here. It's not in flower. Looks like it's done. Flowers are pink. And I've seen a couple other ones, but I haven't seen very, very many of these. Whatever the species is. Wish I'd brought my field press so I could collect this. Figure it out at the herbarium. There's the abaxial surface. Kind of shiny. White almost. See, this guy needs a rock shelter too. See that? He was, we came down, he was, you could almost see part the root. So we put these rocks back. Hold them up a little bit and give them some sun protection for next season when it's extremely hot. Cool little member of can't they see right there? In fruit already? See him? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, those all the little hairs. See the calyx at the base of that fruit. Thing splits open. And look at this. Look at this. You got all those little snail fossils in there. Remnants of a Cretaceous ocean. How about that? Okay, this is kind of cool. Look at a juicy Areocarpus all plumped up from the rain. And that's his root. Couldn't stick it down into the rock, so it had to go lateral. So we're going to cover this up a little bit with some rocks so it doesn't get cooked because that's his storage root. Like fresh, new, fresh green on there too. Now these guys normally flower in October or November. I'm guessing, looks like he hasn't flowered yet. Maybe early November will be pushing out a bud. And a beautiful specimen of that nick tag all lit up. That Mirabilis. Scabbard leaves, stress pigments in there, protection from the sunlight. Flip them over, bright white underneath, tiny flowers, petaloid sepals, so a unisiriate perianth, five stamens, and uh, actually, how many does that look like? Oh, you got two styles in there? What the fuck? Three styles? I can't even tell anymore. One's like a bulbous little uh, stigma. There should be a few stamens. I don't know, I'm all fucked up. Last one I counted had five stamens and a single stigma, but you can see it doesn't have, it's only got one series on it, perianth. They're petaloid sepals. See? You know, as opposed to having a calyx and a corolla, sepals and petals, this just has sepals. It's the massive bastard, or it's massive, for, biggest one we've seen yet. Of course, there's the fruits on this night bloomer, on this mandevilla, apocynaceae, the family. Opposite leaves, and then of course the notorious two follicled uh, ovary. See, it just splits off into two little follicles, like a little bullhorn. Plumo seeds, so seeds, uh, you know, related to milkweeds. So that I got that coma attached to them. A little the, the feathery shit for the wind dispersal attached to every seed. Uh, quite a few seeds in each one of these uh, these uh, follicles. There we go. More more big guys flowering. Probably 80 to 100 years old. This guy over here wedged in a crack. Having no trouble flowering, benefiting off the ample rains that'll last month and a half. Again, 15 inches in one month. Nice, we're getting some boulders. So it looks like a little snake hole right there. Got some astrolepus going off. One of the coolest ferns, IMHO. Pteridaceae is the family right there. And then you got nice Selaginella still going off. So as you know, Lepidophila, little resurrection fern, can nearly completely dry out and then comes back to life once it gets wet. There's a, there's a guy in there somewhere. Look at that. Starting to dry up a little bit. Curling, curling up a little bit. Curling up again. And as we ascend, we're starting to find some nice uh, bivalve fossils. 50 million year old bivalve fossils. Look at that. wonder what species. Would you ever want to go back to a Cretaceous Sea? Would you ever do that? Probably some scary stuff, uh, some scary stuff floating around, but you never know. Might be some nice stuff too. That little Echino series, just so content on that rock. I don't know how he's staying alive. Looks like somebody tried to nibble on him. But it, it, it's so brutal and hot and dry here in the summer. But apparently he's doing fine. Okay, this is nice Eucnite. Lois Ace is the family Metzia family Velcro leaf. Uh, likes growing in the rock walls. Many stamens inside that perianth. The seeds are fucking tiny. There's another one. I'm going to collect this and accession it in the herbarium because I don't think uh, there's any uh, any in there yet, at least from this location. So a, a plant much more common in Mexico. Only gets into the United States and South Texas and, uh, and this little portion of West Texas. So standing on a somewhat precarious and sketchy cliff uh, over the desert basin, Looking at a limestone rock wall, you could see we have uh, an interesting member of the Pteridaceae. This silvery ass little fern. Oh, you got a big ass grasshopper up there. Look at this. A silvery ass fern. Okay. Natholina is the genus here. And uh, you could see those 
little leaflets, a frosty fern, a frosty ass fern. Flip it over to look at the story. Can you see him? Can you even see the story right there? Oh, the camera's just fucked up. This guy, I gotta get it. Look, I don't know, the software on this goddamn camera app is fucked up or something, I don't know. You can see it's just, what a stunner. Right above where we found a Uke 90 Lobata, all the rare shit hanging out under the cliffs. I wonder if there's any Uke 90 over there. Okay, there's a punch of Rufida. That's a rare species, mostly in Mexico. It looks like, looks like somebody was excavating here. I wonder what was going on. Should we go in there, check it out? Oh, see, okay, this is not, this was not excavated. Maybe it was excavated, I don't know. There's an ass print there. Uh, it looks like it might have been from some sort of a uh, bighorn, perhaps, or perhaps a mountain lion, but it just ends right there. There's probably all kinds of bats and shit up in those cracks. Uh, I don't see any evidence. Maybe there's some stuff buried here. Who knows? But, you know, I'm not a big fan of the Hanta virus, so I'm going to get out. But interesting, nonetheless, we get an archaeologist in here, see if, uh, you know, somebody was stashing stuff in here 3,000 years ago. You never know. Little rock shelter, tons of nice mams, and the biggest lofafra I've seen. Look at the geometry on that guy. Look at the beautiful geometry. Incredible. Just spiraling. Got to be probably 100 years old at least. Look at it. Just coming right out of crack in a rock. Okay, I'm going to wrap this up. I got a little dog shit bag for herbarium specimens, that euchnite and that weird uh, fern. That, uh, what was that, Geyer Cosmo or not the Lena? Oh, look, the uh, Euphorbia is flowering. How about that? Well, it's a little late. The bracts are still out, though. Got a little loaf right there. Another loaf right there, flowering. Going off. More right there. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. Have a good rest of your day. Go fuck yourself. Bye. This guy's out because he's growing in the shade, but it's the biggest, that's the biggest one we've seen yet. Is that right? Just a massive fucking, oh, uh, <laughs> like a massive it. wonder of geometry. Look at that guy. He's on a, he's on the uh, north side of this fucking clump of uh, candelilla. See him down there? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a big, big old nice. guy. We're, we're just seeing the natural, we're, 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 we're witnessing the natural selection for drought tolerance. Really? These last couple of years killed a bunch of them. Uh huh. A little euphorbia just forming a. You got a single rhizome. That's all the same plant. Look at it. God damn, what a juicy bastard. Look at that. Just Isn't popping it? right up. Yeah. Bet these guys just came up. Yes. Looks beautiful and kind of serious just going off. And that, that, see how it's red at the base? That just exactly. signifies yeah. signifies new growth. Yes. Reds are the protective pigments on those spines, which are a little bit, those spines would be a little bit softer uh -huh. than the older ones uh -huh. until they harden up. Look at that little epithelantha right there. Another one right there. Wow. This died, this is all dead. This is just the cuticle, which yeah. is part of the reason they're so drought tolerant. So much more drought tolerant than Lofafra because uh -huh. they got this thick, almost plastic-like uh, layer of, uh, yeah. of cuticle. I wonder what it's actually composed of. It feels like chitin. It's obviously not, but wow. But that's what protects them uh -huh. from the heat and the drought. But this guy started to die and then got got plumped up by the rain, like mm -hmm. 15 inches of rain in one month. 